You've probably had someone in your life tell you, turn that down or you're gonna hurt your ears. Can you really feel pain in your ears from noise? How loud is too loud? And how does our hearing even work? I'm Dr. Adam Goodkoff, and today we're gonna cover how loud noises actually damage your hearing, with a little help from my friends in the band Simple Plan, and also what musicians do to protect their hearing. The ear is made of two components, the inner ear and the outer ear, which work together to give us the most amplified and clear sound possible. Let's start with the much more simple outer ear. Have you ever picked up a paper towel roll or a traffic cone and held it up to your ear? The echoing amplified sound that you hear is an overdramatic version of what our outer ear does. The auricle, or the classic cartilage shape that you see on the outside of the ear, is responsible for funneling sound down from the outside world into the inside of our head towards the inner ear. Once the sound gets to the bottom of the ear canal, it encounters a wall, but this is not just any wall. It meets what's known as the tympanic membrane, or TM for short. The TM acts like the head of a drum, vibrating in response to sound waves striking it from the outside. Attached to the back of this TM, or little drum head, is a series of some of the smallest bones in the human body. Despite their size, they are incredibly important, as they link the outer ear to the inner ear, or the area which actually creates sound. The stapes, named after the shape of a stirrup for horse riding, is attached to another, smaller, tympanic membrane-like structure, which is known as the oval window. Opposite this bone and the small drumhead-like structure, there is a snail-like chamber filled with fluid and tiny nerve cells. Depending on the frequency of the sound, depends on how far down the chamber the hair cells are activated. These signals are then decoded by the brain as different pitched sounds. So how does loud noise actually damage the ear? Time is what actually matters most. A leaf blower's engine, for example, is often 95 decibels and can cause hearing damage after just one hour of use. However, take that decibel meter to a rock show and you'll find readings of 110 to 115 or more decibels. At this level, you can experience permanent hearing damage in just two minutes. Push that sound over 120 decibels, such as a firework going off or standing directly in front of a loudspeaker, and you could actually feel physical pain, like I mentioned in the intro. So how are the ears actually damaged? Well, remember those little nerves I mentioned inside the snail-shaped structure of the ear? Well, repeated activation at high noise levels causes these cells to become damaged, and as you may or may not know, in humans, once nerves are damaged, they almost never grow back. That means every time you damage your hearing, it is additive. It's one of the reasons why older folks have a hard time hearing. All of that damage throughout life adds up. So what about rock stars? They're playing shows at 120 to 130 decibels every single night. I decided to ask my friend Pierre from Simple Plan to help me understand a little bit more what musicians are doing to protect their ears. So in-ear monitors are something that have changed the music industry, mm -hmm. uh, both from a hearing protection and a performance standpoint. What's it been like for your career? It's been uh, life-changing. I started playing in a band when I was 13, 14 years old, obviously using regular just stage monitors and just cranking everything up super loud. Um, got some damage from it. Yeah. Uh, and then, uh, you know, about two, three years into this band, we started using these in-ears. And it's been great on so many levels. It protects my hearing, but also I can sing better because I can hear myself right. so much better. If I don't, if I don't have in ears now, I don't even want to sing anymore because I feel like it's just a direct link from my voice to my ears. Right. I control my pitch and my how much energy I have to put out, so I don't over overcompensate and over push. Yeah. So it's been great. And not only do using the monitors help give you better sound, but they isolate you a little too, right? Yeah, exactly. Well, if you if you were playing on stage without in ears you would have to have speakers in front of you that would compete with the drummer and then the guitar player wants his amp turned up. Right. Suddenly you're just, everyone's battling each other for a bit of sound and it gets really, really, really loud and very, very damaging. Um, so yeah, once you isolate all that, you can pick and choose what you want. I want a little bit a little guitars, I want a little bit of my back vocals or lead vocal or drums or whatever. And you can sort of minimize how much you got in there and just really get what you need as far as a singer or if you're a guitar player or whatever. So these are an example of actual molds mm -hmm. that are, are molded to my ear. I'm the only one that could use them. It looks like you have something on a little different. Why don't you tell us what that is? Yeah, so a lot of musicians use the molded ones. I've actually had some in the past and for me, I don't know I don't know what it is, but I love the, the ones the ones like this that have the little foamies on them. Yeah. Because I like to move it around. So if I want a little bit less, a little, I can pull it out in and out where okay. the moldeds are really you're either in right. or you're not in, right? right? So I have, maybe it's my ADD or something, but when I'm on stage, I keep them on. And then if between songs, if I want to hear the crowd, I just pop it out. And these are easier to put okay. in and out. And actually, I really like 
the West Tone, uh, uh, the the, uh, the foams. Yeah. A lot of companies have them, and some of them have plastic things, but I, I really like these ones, and that's why I've been using them for years. That's right. By using custom headphones, musicians can actually block out the external sound that is funneling in and instead deliver a much quieter and more precise sound right towards their eardrum. The result is not only a better experience for the artist to hear what they're doing, but also long term, it's much safer for their hearing. Your hearing is something that, unlike fine wine, only gets worse with age. Take care to protect your ears since the damage adds up. Choose to rock out one too many times without hearing protection, and you might be on your way to becoming deaf. If you learned something in today's video, please hit that thumbs up button, and don't forget to click subscribe to have your health explained.